Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an ASUS WAG laptop. This one is a G513 model and in this video I'm gonna go over how you can open it up and clean it up and this laptop it's really dirty from outside inside and it's like it's never been cleaned. It has only one year and a half usage so let's see it's horribly dirty just look at those fingerprints on that that's like a disgusting and we're gonna open it up and we're gonna repaste clean up the whole system i'm gonna take you on a step by step how you can do it all right i'm gonna go over first thing first you want to power it off i'm gonna go over the tools that we're gonna be using tool number one is screwdriver set i'll be using an ifixit screwdriver set as these are one of the best screwdrivers out there you're gonna be using a phillips number one also, if you get the pro set, they will include you with an opening tool, some tweezers, and a few other stuff. If not, grab yourself for opening tool a guitar pick. A metallic guitar picks are really suitable to opening cases and covers. And also, you need a workshop towel, one sheet or two sheet of workshop towel. I think in this case, I'm going to use like a couple. And also, you need an alcohol isopropolic or isopropolic alcohol 90. 95 percent plus don't get anything under 90 or 95 the higher the better you need your thermal paste uh, your favorite thermal paste i'll be using an arctic mx4 you can use that uh, thermal grizzly cryonaut which is a little bit better for three to four degree only but these are really suitable and with all this on hand we're going to get it started First thing first, we're going to power it up. We're going to flip it upside down there's a whole bunch of screws here there are two types of screws and one screw that we cannot remove that has a seal lock. First, we're gonna go with the short screws that are in the front end of the laptop. The screw on one of the right side or the left side is not removable, so you just have to twist it until you hear that click, you wanna let go. And the rest of the front row, just remove them and keep them in one pile, so you don't mismatch them with the rest of the screws. There should be three of them. So we're gonna keep those in one pile. Now we're gonna remove the mid row and the back row completely and keep those in a different pile. Also, if you guys like my videos, if my videos are helping you guys to do your own service and maintenance, you can click that like button and subscribe to support the channel. I really appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests and answer your questions in the comment area. I appreciate that. So now that we removed all the screws, and we are left over with the one with the C lock. And the reason for the C lock is once you try to open the C lock, it, it does push the cover away from the palm rest. So it's easy for you to stick the opening tool in there and open it up. So you want to stick the opening tool there and just want to twist it up and down like a left and right. Just wiggle it around, work yourself all around on the side. Go to the left side and right side. I have the camera in front of me under the grill it goes a little down has a little you have to work yourself right there there you want to hear those clicks that's fine work yourself to the back end i'm going to stop right there we're going to work on the right side there we go and i'm going to work on the back end All right, once we finish with those, now simply we're gonna lift it up. Don't yank it up, lift up the back side, bring it up, put it towards the front, move it like that. And we're gonna disconnect these two flex cables. So pretty much open up the lock, put your fingernail at the back of these tiny locks and lift up the hinge 90 degree up and then slide the flex cable forward. Same thing with this one. These are for LED lights and in front of the uh, laptop. So these are for these ones. So we clean this one. You can grab a toothbrush and clean up the mesh here, the air circulation. There's a lots of dirt in there. So clean up those. 
and then we have a look at all this look at the fan how dirty it is how clogged up it is so we want to clean up nicely and we're going to replace the thermal paste all that but first for now we're going to remove the battery to remove the battery it's you want to grab a plastic rod or plastic guitar pick and you want to push this metal lock back towards the heatsink a little bit as long as you get a clearance right over then you want to grab this cable stick the guitar pick underneath and just push it down and it should pop open the lock upward it has to come upward you don't slide it back so there's the battery disconnected now we're gonna go ahead and remove the you're gonna grab a little tweezers let me grab myself a tweezer you want to grab a tweezer and we want to disconnect the fan so you just want to pull the jack backward by the side of the jack you want to hold it same thing here disconnect the jack now we're going to remove this tape over here this is for flex cable for the lcd you can either leave it there or you can just disconnect it by pulling this handle upward and it will disconnect it bring it up and put it to one side we are going to remove the fan by removing three screws on this fan and three screws on the other fan okay once you remove that you can just go ahead and remove the fan so there's the fan on the right we're going to do the same thing on the fan on the left i believe this fan goes right under the heat seam, so we won't be able to pull it out because if there's a little handle i believe it goes under so let me verify that no actually it doesn't it has a little adhesive tape so just lift up this tape and bring it and pull it backward because of this tiny gap that goes right underneath. So put it on one side. Now we're gonna remove the heat sink. We gotta first remove this screw right there and the screw on the corners. These are the tiny screws. Now we're gonna remove the four screws for the uh, CPU and four screws for the GPU. But once we remove that you don't want to yank up from here you want to close grab it closer to the cpu and gpu and you want gently to lift it up gently bring it up there we go uh, oh, there's a one tiny screw at the back remove this screw right here they love screwing everything and lift up slowly gently bring it up and there we have it they are using a thermal putty right on the vram so you can use a thermal putty if you want and they do have a liquid metal on the mm, gpu and on the cp on the cpu they're using a liquid metal and they're using a what's called thermal paste on the on the gpu so i don't know why they do one yes one no and they are using an aluminium they're not using a i think i knew that liquid metal is really bad for aluminium but it's good for copper but they're using an aluminium right here so you guys can see man, those people that say don't use aluminium it eats through it but they are using an aluminium metal right there so that's kind of weird thing to do but anyways, you can either put a liquid metal or you can put a thermal paste because as we can see, the liquid metal is making a contact on this side and not on the other half of the mm, GPU. So if I put it up this side, you can see right there. It's making a better contact in here, but it's not making a good contact on the other side. So it's best to put a thermal paste instead of liquid metal because the thermal paste has a little more pasty to it so you can actually make a better contact on both sides you can see it on here it makes a way better contact so yeah so we're gonna first uh, for this one i'll leave the link for thermal putty i don't have a thermal putty right now i'm just gonna order some once i get it in you can clean this one and put a new thermal putty right on top a little bit of uh, dumps on top of those that'll be fine but for now let's go ahead and clean up the fans outside so 
Put the fans outside, we're gonna take it outside, we're gonna clean up with a toothbrush, we're gonna blow some dry air to it, and I'll be back. And also we're gonna clean up the dark system inside in here, remove with a toothbrush all the dust, everything that we have inside the uh, fence. All right, so here I cleaned up the fans, look at the difference between the fans. Nicely clean with a toothbrush and with a blow some air, nicely rub it, don't wash or anything like that. Just with a, use a little bit of dry toothbrush and there you have it. Once the fans are really clean for airflow and I have cleaned the, the heat sink on the fans, everything like that. Now we're gonna clean up the thermal paste and liquid metal and we're gonna apply thermal uh, paste on both of them. So we're gonna grab a little bit of alcohol and we're gonna clean it up. First the liquid metal, just rub it off. Make sure you do not spill it right on top of the computer, just to let it offset. So there is the one, so you guys can see. They will spill really quickly, just be careful. So I don't know what kind of metal is this that they use in here. Aluminium type, I believe. I'm gonna test liquid metal on aluminium and see that how that holds up because it's really not eating through it. And we're gonna clean up the thermal paste. Just clean it up on the GPU. I don't know why they put only thermal liquid metal on the CPU and not on the GPU. The GPU heats up even more than the CPU. And they announced that they have a liquid metal. Just because they put it on the CPU and not on the GPU, that doesn't make it liquid metal on both. So we're gonna do a second bath. Clean it up nicely. We're gonna clean up the CPU, GPU. I use this workshop tab because it just tears apart because of the alcohol, so I don't damage the components around it. So that's why I always say use the workshop towel, don't use any other cloth or anything like that because it can damage the capacitors around the CPU or GPU. And as long as you clean the die, you're fine. You don't have to go crazy cleaning around it. So just use a dry part to clean it. Now we're gonna clean up the CPU and its component around it. You can use a little syringe to pull it back. I can see there's a liquid metal under the Everywhere, so I'm gonna clean it up nicely. Take your time cleaning it up. No need to rush or anything like that. So I'm gonna bring a little syringe and pull it out. All right, now that I cleaned up the CPU, I removed the sponges around it and all those silicones on top of the capacitors. I took my time cleaning it uh, with an alcohol and some tweezers. And there we have it. Now we're gonna put everything back together and we're gonna apply the thermal paste on top. We're gonna put one tiny drop of thermal paste on the GPU and one drop on the CPU. All right, with those done, now simply we're gonna grab the heatsink. Also, if you have the thermal putty, I'll leave the link for a new thermal putty. You can clean this one and put a, a nice dot of thermal putty right on top. Uh, and then bring the heatsink down. And once it's in here, we, you don't want to lift it up again. And we want to put the, the screws for the GPU and the CPU. Make sure you always cross screw them. Do not go all around. Always cross screw these uh, screws. And put the four screws for the GPU. And put the tiny screws on the sides. And don't forget the screw right on the bottom right here. 
and the next thing will be to just grab the fans slide the fans in the right direction i believe this one was for this side there we go and you want to slide in the fan cable jack right into the connector you can do this first before you put this one in it's easier just push it in and then place the fan right under the heatsink and put it in and tuck in the cables right under the heat pipe and put the three screws for this side and the same thing we're gonna do on the other side and there we have it we're gonna run the cable for flex cable for the screen we're gonna run it right through here by the heat sink and bring it over tape it down and put it right through the jack just push down on the jack and it goes to its place no extra stuff you need to do and there we have it and the last thing would be to just plug in the push the lock down put the battery straight over and then push it towards the motherboard and lock it down and tuck down the cable and that's how you clean it up and the last thing would be to grab the bottom uh, case or uh, grab the bottom case you want to put it in an offset position just like this you want to grab these two led lights flex cable and you want to slide them right through the jack and then you want to lock it down all right last thing would be to just bring it over put it down and you want to squeeze every corner down in the back side you want to hit those click sounds and the last thing would be to just tighten up the screw on the c-lock and put the short screws on the front and the long screws or the mid screws uh, to the mid and towards the back and uh, for cleaning the keyboard and everything else you can punch push down you can use a keyboard cleaner solution to clean up all these greases everything like that i have a different solution cleaner and you can leave it and clean it the wish the way you wish and the way you is better for you so and we're gonna clean this one in a bit i hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out and if it did please click that like and subscribe to support the channel if you have any question or request feel free to leave them in a video comment i'll try to answer them as soon as i can as always thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video